Everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. I'm your host, Kathleen, and I'm here with my new friend, Anderson Blue. What's up, Anderson? Hey, what's going on? How's everything going? Super excited to have you here today. We're going to be working <laughs> on some really cool character design illustration coming up here in a few minutes. But chat, I just want to say hello to you. Give us a shout out in the chat pod. Uh, let us know where you're watching from and if you know Anderson's work already, because I know he sent out a little social blast before this to get some of his friends over here. Um, real quick before we start, let me just chat about the schedule for the rest of the day. We've got a full day of Adobe Live coming up right after us. We started the day with Paul's new show at 8 a.m., followed by a replay of one of Val's daily creative challenges. We've got character design here right now, and we're also going to be back tomorrow, same time, same place. And then for the rest of the day, we've got tons of illustration. We've got Val coming in with some illustration. We've got Andrew coming in with some Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, followed by the XD Daily Creative Challenge. So full day of stuff. But for now, let's just focus on Anderson. I'm just going to let you <laughs> introduce yourself to the fine folks who might not know you yet. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So my name is Anderson Blue, Illustrator, Graphic Designer and Sneaker Designer um, based out of New York. Um, pretty much what I do is sneaker illustrations. What I like to say, sneaker art. Um, let me start by showing you guys some of the stuff that I've done. Right now, what you see is some of the stuff I've done on Instagram, but some of the stuff I'm known for, I'll show you guys the Converse project. This is my latest Converse project I did with Foot Locker. Uh, we did this for charity for the people that were affected with uh, by COVID-19 and you know, just trying to get back to the community with people that were just having a hard time. So all the money went to charity for this and a big shout out to Foot Locker for making that happen. Um, another thing I'm known for is the G.I. Joe collaboration I did with Foot Locker um, based on two of the characters, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. If you're a big fan of G.I. Joe like I am, you know exactly who these people are. I'm just going to scan through to show you what the Very sneakers cool. look like. Thank you. Thank you. And then... I want to show you guys the thing that I love doing, the sneaker artwork. Um, right now, I'm just showing you guys on my website some of the sneaker artwork I've done. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to jump in and show you guys one of my newest designs. Very cool. I think your style is so iconic. And you were mentioning <laughs> before we started that you're going to really go from start to finish on your, Absolutely. your process. Absolutely. So let's jump into it. What are we what are we covering today? All right. So today we are working on, I should show it to you guys, this Jordan 5 called the Raging Bull. So what I did was I decided to take those two worlds, put it together and actually turn the sneaker into a bull. So what I have on screen right now is a sketch that I did. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna bring this design to life, pretty much going over my sketch, um, adding the details, the colors, and just walking you through how I do my artwork. Awesome. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you do pencil sketch first and you bring it in to Illustrator. Yes. So I like to do all my artwork by hand first before I bring it to Illustrator. Um, I know everybody's different. I know a lot of people do it digitally, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like I have more flexibility just doing it the old school way, you know? Yeah, I'm in the same boat, same process. <laughs> cool. So let me jump in here and just uh, let's get started. Cool. I see you already have some layers set up. I do. I do. Tell me just, about those. Uh, so uh, the first layer I have here is just what I call the inking one. So pretty much right now, I'm just going to go ahead and start working on my shapes, start planning everything out. Um, let's see here. Let's start out with the mouth. But yeah, I like to break up everything into shapes, just to make my, my life a lot easier, especially when it comes to just doing like, um, you know, the laces, the stroke, the colors and stuff like that. Awesome. I'm excited to see your process. I feel like everyone starts a little bit different. Yeah. 
So right now working on the Cintiq. I used to always do everything with uh, the mouse, but I decided that, uh, I shouldn't even say I decided, but over time I've learned just using the Cintiq just makes life so much faster. Yeah, I feel like especially if we're gonna use the pencil tool in Illustrator, it's kind of perfect for the Cintiq. Yeah, definitely. So I definitely start out with the pencil tool just to start working on the shape. And then if anything doesn't match up perfectly, I can just always edit with my mouse. Nice. And chat, if you have any questions while Anderson's working uh, about process or his story, where he gets inspiration from, uh, just pop it in the chat and I'll throw it over to him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Anthony already has a question for you. Cool. Uh, do you always start with a sketch before you take it into Illustrator or do you ever start just an Illustrator? It's very, <laughs> it's very rare that I start off just an Illustrator. Um, for me, I just feel like it's easier to have a blueprint so I know what I'm doing because I mm -hmm. want to take the guesswork out of uh, jumping into Illustrator, you know? And I just feel like I just move a lot faster when, I, when I'm pretty much following uh, my, own, my own roadmap, you know? Yeah, you kind of take all of those big executive decisions out of the exactly. out of the question. Totally. Uh, Fairy says, I always use the pen tool for that in Illustrator. So is there a reason that you like the pencil tool instead of the pen tool? Um, I just have more control, you know? So as I'm working on this, but yeah, um, before I used to always use the pen tool when it came to um, well, using the mouse, but then as soon as I got the Cintiq, which is a little easier, just to use the pencil tool, mm -hmm. especially since a lot of my artwork is so based on like bold lines and stuff like that. So I feel like I just have more control over everything. Nice. Sherry is wondering what your favorite sneaker is. Can you even choose? <laughs> that is a hard one. So I'm gonna be biased and I'm definitely gonna say the sneakers I designed are up there. Uh -huh. But outside of that, uh, you know, I grew up playing basketball. That's why I'm into sneakers. But uh, sneakers is big in the basketball culture. So a lot of the Jordans I'm a fan of. Another series I'm I really like as far as sneakers is a sneaker. Uh, it's called the SB series by Nike. So it's mm. pretty much skateboarding. But the reason why I like it is because they do such a good job when it comes to the storytelling. So they do sneakers based on various things. It could be like Chinese New Year, or it could be on different race cars and stuff like that. So that what so that series was a series that really got me into sneakers back in high school. Nice. I definitely like the SBs as well. If I was gonna buy some Nikes, those would be it. It's definitely hard to get your hands on, but if you can, it's, <laughs> it's always nice, you know? Are you on that, uh, I forget what the site is called, but it's like it notifies you whenever there's a sneaker drop. Sneakerhead, is that what it's called? There are so many. Yeah. So like, honestly, I just kind of, if I catch it on the sneakers app, um, then I'll follow up outside of that. There's just so many, so many Reddit groups and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So Fairy's wondering where you get your inspiration from. You said you grew up playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you're inspired by? Um, That's a good question. So a lot of my artwork is definitely inspired by like the golden era of like Looney Tunes. Um, nice. You know, like back in the day when uh, they had, uh, forgetting the people's name, like Tex Avery and stuff like that. So, and that's where I get my line work from. Um, at first, line work wasn't really a big thing for me, but then I decided to play into it. I blamed that on New York and a whole lot of graffiti. <laughs> so, so those were definitely the cartoons that definitely put the seed in my head as far as designing in the way that I design, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was reading a little bit in your about me section on your website saying that mm -hmm. you tried everything from uh, graffiti art to t-shirt design to mm -hmm just trying to do anything to get yourself ready to go out into the real world. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see all those things that you went through to kind of land on where you are today. Yeah, this, so it's fun. It's a really funny story. This uh, sneaker design series happened totally by accident. So um, about four or five years ago, um, had a clothing brand. Uh, that's why it's bluedreams.com. And uh, everything was moving smoothly with that. I was creating uh, t-shirt graphics inspired by, it was like aquatic themed t-shirt designs because mm. I'm from Long Island. And then I tore my patella tendon 
And for those who don't know, the patella tendon is like worse than the ACL. It connects pretty much the tendon that connects to you like your kneecap. And then um, without it, you can't walk. So <laughs> I spent the next month pretty much on bed rest. And uh, it was at that time I was reflecting. I was thinking about like what, what my next move should be. I enjoyed doing the t-shirts, but it's just a really, really hard business. And then I said, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do artwork inspired by the things that I love, like basketball and sneakers, and let's see what happens. So I spent that month, month rather than just like, you know, complaining and just trying to, you know, rather than being upset, was just focusing on that. And then it was the artwork that I did when I was on bed rest that like took off, like I've never seen before. So wow. I did like the Space Jam design and then it got featured on these blogs like Hypebeast and all these sneaker blogs that, I, that you know, I read growing up. And then I said, you know what? Let me follow this and see where it takes me. And I said, you know what? I'll do it for a year. And, you know, in a year's time, I should be able to know if this is working or if it's not working. And then in that year, for me, just creating nothing but sneaker designs is probably the most exposure my art business has ever gotten. And then that's it. It's been doing it ever since. Wow. Do you recommend that workflow for other people? Like give it a year, give it six months and just see where it takes you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I tell people always experiment. You never know. But one of the biggest things that was an eye opener to me was just that like, creating art for a demographic because before you know i'm from Long island but you know i don't surf so you know i could i didn't realize that there was like a little bit of a division there happening you know right but when i started creating art for the thing that i grew up on i spoke the language and when people look at me they said hey this person is from the same world that i'm from that's what opened up my artwork to a brand new lane of people and that's why i think it you know it it, it worked out you know so yeah. for me, it's just telling people that, hey, if you're going to do artwork, because, you know, you know, if you could do Adobe Illustrator, if you're a graphic designer, you know, we could design anything, you know, but I'm a big believer in if you just focus on a demographic, you know, like if you if you're a vegan doing vegan graphics would probably be the best thing for you because, you know, you're talking to the audience that, you know, so. Um, so, yeah, that, that would definitely be my advice to anybody just trying to figure it out and trying to figure out who they want to design for, you know. Right. I think that makes things a little more sustainable too. Like you're doing mm -hmm. something you actually like versus yep. something you think other people are going to like. It's a, it's a nice medium that you find there. Absolutely. Yeah. Richard says that he finds space exploration really romantic. So maybe Richard should be doing some space exploration artwork. Absolutely. There's definitely a crowd for that. Oh yeah. You know, for the Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson's of the world and stuff like that. <sighs> space. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Raphael says, first of all, I'm a big fan of you guys. Thanks for sharing this with us. Uh, that's awesome, Raphael. Good to have you. Yeah, I would like definitely. to know what is your reference or your favorite artist in life? Yeah, you mentioned Tex, Tex Avery. Is there anyone else that really inspires you? I like a lot of people. Like the artists yeah. that I like are, are uh, more the cartoon artists. Like I'm a big fan of Jim Davis. Mm -hmm. Garfield is probably the first person that, you know, I probably, uh, his artwork that I traced when I was a young kid and stuff like that. So more comic strips, more of like the cartoons, more of the Disney stuff. Like those are the people I look to. I think when it comes to like animation and comics, definitely comics is probably some of the best artists in the world because they have to sell this thing and this personality, you know, to make people oh my believe gosh. it. Yeah, they have to draw so much of it too. <laughs> I don't know how people do that. I took a comic oh book gosh. class and it's just how much pages you have to do in such a small period of time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel like it's harder than animating because it's like every page is something new. You're not just kind of tracing over the same thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Goodness gracious. Chat, let us know if we have any uh, comic artists watching, if we have any animators watching, or if that's something that you'd want to get more into, chat, let us know. Always curious. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I have the laces about done. Have about, okay. I have the nose. So yeah, so right now I'm just quickly going through everything, just trying to do all the simple shapes. And then I'm gonna loop back and do the details. And after I do the details, that's when I start adding in the color. So, but we're moving pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we got a good clip going on. It's awesome. 
uh, chat. Let us know if you have any further questions. Happy to cover them. And you mentioned before we started that this bowl kind of design is almost like your 2021 version of something that you've done in the past. Yes. So I've actually done a uh, the Air Jordan 1 as a bowl. And that was one of the first designs that I've done. And um, Jordan's doing another sneaker, actually called a Raging Bull. So I thought that I would go back and do a new version of it, you know? Um, that design that I did, that I did as a pin, as a print, was probably one of my earlier designs. So what's good about this series is that the more I do it, the better I get at it, the more things that I add. So that design that I did at first was probably three years ago. So now I have like three years of experience in adding different elements to it. So really excited to put this, put this one together. Yeah, it's gonna be a great kind of exploration and where you've been and mm -hmm. how your skills have improved. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony in the chat says, I'm currently studying comic art and character design. I want to make a comic. Nope. That's super sweet. Anthony, this is the perfect live stream for you. Absolutely. I almost wonder, do you have any favorite, do you have any kind of books you like, Kathleen? Comic books? Yep. So I'm a big reader of webtoons. So it's like really? online <laughs> comic books. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I read them every night. But uh, That's pretty awesome. yeah, I've never really gotten into the classic kind of American comic books. It's mm -hmm. mostly like Japanese and Korean, mm. but uh, I definitely love graphic novels like as a medium. Mm -hmm. Very, very awesome. I was lucky enough in art school to take some classes that was like literature, but it was all graphic novels. So cool. it was perfect for artists. Yeah, I would say I enjoy the superhero stuff. <laughs> Uh -huh. My favorite, I love Marvel, but hands down, I, I don't know why, but they just can't mess them up is Batman. Batman has always just been a consistent uh, graphic novel, comic book, even when it comes to the movies. I feel like it's definitely meant for adults, which is nice. <laughs> very dark, very gritty. That's cool. I'm a, if I had to land on an American kind of superhero, mm -hmm. it would be just all of the X-Men. X-Men is my jam. X-Men is really good. I enjoy <laughs> X-Men too. Funny story, which I actually just found out that me and Storm have the same last name. No way. Yeah. So my real last name is Monroe and so is hers. It just felt differently. There you go. Yeah. I felt special. I was like, see, look at that. I made <laughs> Related. it. Related. <laughs> yeah, I made it. <laughs> you got to call her up and be like, hey, Auntie Storm. Yeah. If you give you me some just, of those powers. Yeah. If you just give me a pass to Wakanda, that'd be grand. <laughs> Uh, people are wondering what webtoons are in the chat. It's just an online kind of graphic novel app. A lot of them are Korean or Japanese, but highly recommend them. Is it like mangas or? Yeah, it's kind of that style. A lot of it is, but not all of it. Okay. Um, but it covers a vast landscape of topics. Cool. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you're a, a coffee or a tea kind of guy. I'm a thousand percent a coffee person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely love my coffee. Do you have it any special way? I don't. Just the just me getting my hands on it is good enough for me. <laughs> it's funny though, when I went to Australia, I, I saw that they had so many different ways of doing it, like flat white and uh -huh. so many so many other variations i was just like okay i i get it i heard you guys had the best coffee but like everywhere by default makes amazing coffee oh, that sounds awesome yeah they're proud of it really 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 good stuff they have over there my teammate kendall says i love seeing the pencil tool getting some love yes it is i feel like it is an undervalued tool I'm not gonna lie yeah, and I think if you are starting an Illustrator and you maybe did Photoshop before and vectors kind of just freak you out, the pencil <laughs> tool is really, it definitely freaked me out. Right. Um, the pencil tool is a great place to start because it feels just like you're drawing, but with right. vectors. Right. So it did take me forever to learn the pen tool. And like once you get it, like you don't forget mm -hmm. as long as you're using it. Mm -hmm. But um you know, working on a tablet, pencil tool is definitely the way to go, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I was surprised to see that you worked on a Cintiq with Illustrator, but now that you're using the pencil tool a bunch, I'm like, oh, okay, I get why. Yeah, yeah. Like, so the reason why I stick to Illustrator is just because um, a lot of my artwork goes into prints and stickers and stuff like that. So just to save myself the, the time, um, it's easier just to reshape everything as a vector because my stuff isn't so... Um, it's not like I'm doing digital painting or anything like that where it will mm -hmm. slow down the computer. Oh yeah, that's true. No textures really. Exactly. Like I use textures from time to time, but it's usually at the very, very end. Mm -hmm. And I just do it on Photoshop. Yeah. The classic workflow. Right, right, right. But it's like, you got to use the tools that are best for the job and that just works. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. We've got tons of friends in the chat. We've got Amy Hood from Hoodspa Design. What's up, Amy? Is going on, Amy. Shout Yay. out to shout out to the Hood Sisters. Mm hmm. The best of the best. We've got Cody <laughs> Bear. What's up, Cody? Christine. Hello. Christine says I'm into cold brew coffee these days. Absolutely the best. That is my go-to. Definitely, cold brew is where it's at. Yeah, I'm a, I'm the kind of person that's wanting a cold iced coffee or an iced latte instead of a hot coffee, even in the winter time. I was just gonna say that. Over here really? in Europe, it's like 32 degrees and I'll have like my hand shaking. I'm just like, still got to do it. Got to get that cold, cold drink. Exactly. Ah, so good. All right. <laughs> Amy wants to know how it feels to be TikTok famous. We haven't talked about that yet. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, a dream come true. It's definitely, there's no better feeling than uh, having a lot of 30 year olds follow you, you know? So, uh, all jokes aside, it's it's fun. It's definitely fun. It's, it's not anything that I thought it would be. Meaning huh. that, you know, TikTok was musically. Um, I didn't think it would be as big as it is now. And I think it's really cool how it's going from a dancing platform to educational platform. So, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do more educational stuff, but you know, you do it yourself, you do tutorials. It's very, very hard if you're doing a tutorial, then you have to edit it and make sure everything looks perfect to put it up to YouTube. So TikTok is like a really cool medium and being able to do a tutorial with half the hassle. Yes, I'd say less than half the hassle. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and I think there's a kind of built-in expectation in TikTok that things aren't polished. Yep. So it's like, you don't have to worry about that perfection because no exactly. one's expecting it. Exactly. So, you know, I've played around with a lot of social medias and, um, you know, Instagram is cool, but it's been around for a while and I feel it's not really showing a lot of my work. I don't know about everybody else. So they'll try something new. That's awesome. My uh, Instagram recently got deactivated for no reason. <laughs> really? Oh, and I no. have my entire portfolio on there. So I was like, oh, I, maybe no. I should become a, a TikToker now. It's back now, as you saw this morning, but okay. that was a whole thing. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear you got it back up and running. I, I wouldn't even know I wouldn't even know who to call. I, I didn't either. Instagram <laughs> wasn't very helpful. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Amy, yeah. Amy's saying it's cool how the less you try, the better uh, you are on TikTok. <laughs> the expectations <laughs> are low, but the reward is high. Yes, that is definitely true. We've got a tiny dog cameo happening in the back right now. You awesome. can barely, barely see cameo. him, but he does exist. Oh no, Rachel says that that happened to her as well. You got a deactivated Instagram and didn't get it back. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I know that can be so frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, man, oh man. <sighs> that does not sound like fun, but I'm happy that yours came back. I feel ter terrible for Rachel. I know. Maybe we just all need to move over to uh, to TikTok. So yeah, it's, with, not, it's not too bad. With the TikTok mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. do you feel like you're getting business kind of work from it or is it more just a way that you share your work and grow an audience um yes i would definitely say um i would say i'm getting work from there mm -hmm. not design work so much but maybe like partnerships with oh. uh companies that want to do design stuff they just don't know how to do it um i'm trying to think of anything like yeah definitely just companies want to 
get the awareness out as far as you know what they do and what they do for artists and stuff like that i would say mm -hmm. um but i just think it's so new um people don't know how to approach it yet even from a business standpoint and i get it because there are kids that are doing art that are in art school and there's me doing it on there so sometimes it's hard for the business to tell what's different so um i i, I think in time there'll be only more people reaching out so yeah gotcha yeah, it really is kind of the Wild West right now over yeah, there. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Anthony says, maybe I should move to another platform, maybe Behance, TikTok, or Twitter. I mean, yeah, you're I on Behance right now. It's yeah, a good I think platform. Those, those are all good options. Those are all good options. Honestly, I'm a strong believer in it. So I tell people, just go where your audience is. So whoever you're trying to design for, who knows, your audience might be, you know, on Behance or it might be on Pinterest. You know, I don't use Pinterest, right. but, you know, maybe if you want to do stuff for weddings, you know, Pinterest might be the thing for you. So I, I just think there's so many options. I would just go wherever you feel like your audience is. That's really smart. And maybe not trying to spread yourself so thin across yeah, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's, it's just impossible just to do everything, you know? So I'm a strong believer just choosing, just choosing something that's going with it. Nice. Uh, Amy says that secretly LinkedIn is a really good place. It's going off these days. I have heard that also. That's another one. I, I would say the two platforms I hear the most about is LinkedIn and, and TikTok as far as is getting your name out. That's a really good point. Hmm, never even considered LinkedIn. I'll have to look into that. Mm-hmm. So I can't talk too much about it because, um, you know, I'm only hearing from the grapevine, but as far as the people that really use it, I would say uh, I've heard nothing but, but great things. I mean, I feel like if you're trying to make some strong connections, LinkedIn is a great place to do it. Like people are there mm -hmm. for networking specifically. Absolutely. Let's see how far I am. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, definitely. So I would say I'm about 30% through, which is pretty good. Nice. Do you ever zoom out and just see you have so much work left to do, but you've been working on it for like an hour? Yeah. Yeah. I do that <sighs> all the time, all the time. Is there a part of this process that you really dislike and have to kind of force yourself to do? Uh, this would be it. <laughs> this would be it. <laughs> I don't mind it. It's just, uh, you know, um, it's gotta be patient. That's all, you know, my favorite part is doing the coloring and seeing it come to life right now. It just looks like, um, I'm just laying down the foundation, you know? Right. But this is the most important part, you know? So if you don't do it the right way here, it's not going to look correct. Right. And you don't want to be spending your energy fixing it when you should be doing other things. Right. And that is why I just follow my sketch. Um, let's see here. What should I do next? Let's see. Let's finish the bottom of the sneaker. Cool. I like how you're doing the worst part first. So you're getting it out of the way. Yep. <laughs> Just gotta do it. Just gotta stick to it, you know? Yeah. So because I'm from uh, the screen printing world, I try to stick to objects because this is a flat, and for people who don't know, this is like a flat image. Uh, it doesn't really matter if um, everything's kind of overlapped with each other, but for, if you're doing anything for like screen printing, it's probably not a good idea. So just throwing that out there. That's a really good point. Like if you're getting a file ready for production, everything mm -hmm. needs to be kind of like cut out from each other. Exactly. Like so a puzzle. I'm so I'm so accustomed to doing that, that I end up just, it just follows me even though I'm doing stuff for like stickers and whatnot. Right. But if you ever need to put it on a t-shirt, exactly. it's ready. It's ready. Absolutely. So was um, like a fashion brand and designing t-shirts, was that always something you were interested in or did it kind of come out of nowhere? Um, honestly, I thought that was the best option to have to make uh, a career as an artist. Like, to, like when I came out of college, I went to school for business in my head, I thought that made the most sense as far as having a business in the arts. I thought a clothing brand made the most sense because, you know, people buy it, it goes to clothing stores, you can sell it on your own website. Um, that made the most sense. So that's what I went with. 
Uh, I was definitely, you know, when I grew up, I didn't have any artists in the family or any other artists I knew. I didn't go to art school or anything like that. I'm self-taught. Um, but, you know, one of the things you hear the most is like the whole starving artist uh, yes. scenario. So like, when I knew I wanted to do art, I said, how can I do this to where I know I can make this a career out of it, you know? So that's when I decided like, you know what, I'm gonna teach myself graphic design. And that's how it all started. That's awesome. You're a success story. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I say that as a non-success story myself. I had the exact same thought in high school. Like, I know I love art, but I do not want to struggle my entire life. So how can I do this? And I was like, oh, graphic design. And then I tried graphic design for a year and I was like, oh, this is not my thing. Like, what do I do? Um, so that was an interesting crossroads to come to as a as a college student. It's, I feel like, but you know, times have changed. You know, when I first started learning, this, this is just a totally different landscape, you know? Like you said, if I said graphic design, I showed somebody this, they say, this is not graphic design. You know, right. graphic design is more websites and more business cards and very, very corporate, you know? Mm -hmm. Like now things have changed to where you know, you're starting to see more graphic designers do things like this, you know? So I think it just all depends on the times. There you go. Uh, Amy is wondering for, for you, Anderson, and for the chat, what are some of the YouTube channels or podcasts or communities that helped you find your path since you are <laughs> self-taught? Shout out to my AID family. Shout out to Adventure in Design. That's definitely the one that held my hand and showed me the way. Um, a lot of business podcasts also a lot of the npr stuff definitely helped um trying to think trying to think there are other design podcasts that i've listened to right now i just have was drawing the ill blank mm -hmm. but um it's a little bit of everything you know i'm a strong believer in as an artist in order to to it depends it depends if you want to have your own creative agency and be your own freelancer you definitely have to know business but mm -hmm. if you want to work for a company, it's not as important. It's just more, you know, trying to know, try to keep up to date with what's going on. So it just depends on the avenue you're trying to, you know, you're trying to travel. For me, definitely um, going the freelance route and doing a creative agency is a thing that I want to do. So just trying to be up on my business and trying to um, figure out how to navigate that avenue. Nice. And you have that background in yes. school where you can draw yes. from there. Yes. Don't worry. The The business world knows nothing about art. So you still you have to take like a little bit of it and like sprinkle yes. it on there. <laughs> wow. That's how you really are a showstopper. Just bring those two things together. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. So you had mentioned adventures and design. Is that mm -hmm. is that a podcast or what is that? Yeah, it's definitely a podcast. You could look them up. I think it's I'm pretty sure if you Google adventures and design, on Google will come up. Uh, my mm -hmm. friend Mark, what he does is he just brings on different talented artists and asks them about their story, their journey, you know, um, how they got into it, and just gives helpful chicken nuggets on how to become a better artist. Specifically chicken nuggets. Definitely chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's awesome. And have yeah. you been on the podcast before? I have. It's, it's funny because when I went on there, I went on three years ago, like, how can I, um, you know, just getting advice on how to get my name out and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see like the journey of me asking questions to things starting to happen to where I am today. So, um, so yeah, I definitely, if you're starting out, if you're self-taught or you're just trying to figure out this crazy world of art, I would definitely say, check it out. That's awesome. Podcasts are such a great uh, tool for designers because we're always, looking for something to listen to while we work. Yes. And that's <laughs> nice too, being able to like kind of zone out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absorb it through osmosis. Absolutely. Uh, Simon wants to know, who is your dream client? Definitely Nike's up there. Uh -huh. um, definitely Nike. Um, definitely designing for some basketball players. I would love to to do that doing some sneaker projects um, with some people for basketball, just because like I said, I'm such a big fan of basketball. So me being able to do that would definitely, definitely be, you know, 
that that pinch yourself moment, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Who's your go-to team? <laughs> so I'm a big LeBron fan. So wherever, oh, he me goes, too. wherever he goes, I go. So right now I am on the Lakers. Yep. So uh yeah, that's my team for right now. And <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be a New Yorker because the Knicks are terrible. And they've been terrible for as far as I can remember. So that's nice. It's part of their charm. It is a part of their charm. The charm <laughs> is is uh, they're able to keep a full stadium and they don't win. That is but more than charm. That's success. Yes, I, I would say so. That even when the product is terrible, people still show up. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So right now I'm about to let's see here. Huh, start making some brushes. Okay. So what I like to do, and there's so many ways of doing it. I'll just zoom into this. So like, rather than, so by default, Adobe like already has brushes you can already mess with, but with the Cintiq to have a little bit more control, I like to create it myself. So what I like to do is I like to just figure out what kind of width I want to have it. So with this, um, and I'm doing this right here. I don't know if you guys see my mouse, but right here for the cheek of the eye. So I would say that thickness is about right. And I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. So after I do that, I'm just going to drag, so drag this into the brushes. I already have some over there, but I'll just do one to show you guys an example. When I do it, I don't like to do black only because if you try to change the hue and colors, it doesn't work with black. So I'll do it like as like, let's say if I do it as a green, I'll just take this, drag it over and I'll change it to an art brush. And then right here, if you always want to be able to uh, change the colors. So if you want to leave leave it that color, you just for the method, you just leave it as none. But mm -hmm. if you want to be able to change it to any color, hue shift is what does it. Um, so depending on what you have or what tools you have, I could use pressure and pressure be able to like use different strokes and stuff like that. But for this, I think it's gonna be pretty consistent. So I'm just gonna leave it as fixed. And by the way, you could always go back and edit this. So let's just say I'll just change the AB brush. Nice. Right. And then I'm gonna hit okay. So what's gonna happen now, rather than having to constantly go back and keep editing in it. So I can just go right here, one stroke, boom, it's right there. Woo. So like I said, I might want it thicker. So what I'll do is I just go back and I could just raise the width here just to get it right. So I'll probably say 120 would be it. And then just try it again. And there you go. Very and, nice. And like I said, you just keep playing with it until you get it right. But the cool thing is if you're you know using a Cintiq like myself, it's just easier to fly through the designs. There you go. That's perfect, actually. It's be a little easier to fly through the designs. And then what I do right there is just change the color up here. And there you go. So wow. if I want to do it again for the nose. And it just takes two seconds. So that's how I like to make my brushes whenever I'm using the Cintiq, just to make my life easier. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more of it when I get to the color section, just to show you how I do my colors. And then the cool thing is also, let's say if God forbid is a little, you know, it, if it's uh, you want a little bit thinner, you can always just drop the stroke and it'll be able to do it. So right Perfect. there. So um, so yeah, cool little trick I learned. I thought we'd just share that. Yeah, that's super helpful. I think a lot of people don't even know you can make or edit a brush in Illustrator. Yeah, that was definitely trial and error. I think I tripped my way to that, but hey, I thought we'd share it. There you go. And so I'm I'm interested to see how you're gonna mix these brush strokes with this thicker outline that you've been working on the whole yes. time. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. Well, the good news is I'm almost there, so we'll be able to see that. Okay, cool. As you continue to work, uh, Joe wants to know if you would ever design for Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. I can't um, say no. The reason why he says that is just that, uh, you know, he knows I'm a big LeBron fan and Giannis is like the next person to take the throne. So, uh, and he also beat my Knicks. So I'm not a big fan of Giannis right now, more of a personal thing. But outside right. of that, I think he's a, a, a incredible talent. 
I thought there was some backstory behind that question, oh, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was at Madison Square Garden with my family, and the Knicks are winning in Knicks fashion, of course. And there's 30 seconds, there's, there's 30 seconds left. And then, like, Giannis gets the ball. I'm like, there's no way he's going to hit a three. He doesn't hit threes. He hit a three. He won the game. And it was silent. Oh, minus no. the minus the the crowd from from Greece who were like waving their flags. I was of just course. Like, of course. So. Uh, painful. Yeah. It, hey, as a Knicks fan, you're just used to it. That's all. That's true. If you're a New York fan, you're definitely used to it. <laughs> um, John wants to know how do you keep mentally healthy from being overwhelmed by social media. That is a very very good question. Um. I don't read the comments. I start off with that. Um, oh, interesting. You no, know I take that back. It depends where I'm posting. So like, I'll pretty much like dedicate a certain time to doing that. And um, I'll just be realistic with myself. I post whenever I can. Um, I keep a schedule. So I know that I at least do it once a day. And then when I post, I'll just like walk away. And then I'll come back, you know, later on in the day and I kind of go through everything and answer everything. I just think it's if you're constantly on it, it definitely makes it really, 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 really tough, you know? Yes. But I think also, and this goes back to talking to your audience, I think if you create an artwork for a certain audience, you get less of, um, you know, that craziness, you know? Because the people I talk to, we just talk about sneakers, releases, and, you know, basketball. So it's, you know, it's like almost like talking with friends. I think that's a really smart and good point where if you're trying to be everything to everyone or just follow mm -hmm. every trend, you're going to get the people that are watching those kind of videos. Yep. And what's cool is like the most I'll get is like, you know, LeBron sucks. And I'll <laughs> laugh at that, you know, like right. what's, what's a better negative comment than that, you know? So, <laughs> so that definitely helps. That definitely helps. It's really, really good point. So if, if, if anybody could take anything away from this is definitely, you know, find an audience to design for and stick to that. I'm curious about the chat, if they have any ideas about the audiences that they would design for, like, what do they love? Yeah, I'm curious too. We've got a lot of awesome creative people that watch these. So I'm always curious to learn from them and, and see what they make. And it could definitely be anything. I mean, video games. I remember there was a time when if you said you were playing video games, a waste of time. Not anymore. Oh, no. Are you a gamer? Uh, I used to be. Okay. I, I decided to dedicate that time to designing, but uh, I'm a big fighting game person. So I love my oh, Street Fighter. Gotcha. So if anybody wants to catch an L on their free time, definitely give me a call. Shoot me an email. <laughs> Definitely clear my schedule. I'll be more than happy. Oh man, do you have a favorite fighter? Oh yeah, uh, I'm a big Guile person. Mm. Yeah, that's the guy with that's the guy with the blonde hair. He's in the Is army. It spiky. Yep, that's him. Okay. One of the old school characters. I'm kind of just a, a button masher when it okay. comes to fighting games, but I definitely think they're fun. That's okay too. You know, <laughs> games for everybody. You know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Fairy wants to know, do you like Mortal Kombat 11? So I actually haven't played it. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I don't play Mortal Kombat is a bad one, but I'll say it anyway. So um, for Mortal Kombat, I have to like press a button to block. And for some reason, I just couldn't get past that. Like that was uh -huh. it. That was, that was the thing for me. So it's not a good reason, but that's why I don't play Mortal Kombat. Hey, but you know what you like. That is true. But it's a great series, though. Um, all right. So something I'll talk about. So anytime I make shapes, there's a few ways you could do this. Um, you could definitely do a... Hold on, I'm forgetting the term right now. So you could definitely either cut the shapes out, what I like to do. That just kind of keeps my sanity. Or you do a clipping mask. Sometimes clipping masks could definitely put a lot of pressure on your computer or my computer at least. So what I'm gonna do with this one is in order to make sure everything flows nicely, I'm just actually gonna cut this out as a shape. 
So if I go to my Pathfinder and I go right here for the divide, and I just ungroup it. What that does is it gets rid of like the little piece right here. So then you don't see it kind of looping over. So I thought we'd just show that, but you can do the same thing with a clipping mask. It just depends on whatever you're into. So yeah. I thought we'd just show that to you guys. Nice. You could also use the shape builder tool if you want to take it another direction. Yeah, that's another that's another one that I know of. I just have not used. Mm -hmm. That's my preferred way. Pathfinder, I always get confused with <laughs> what all the different icons mean. But mm -hmm. shape builder, I'm like, OK, I can literally see it. And that's what I'm going to do. No, I'm happy you said that, because definitely it's going to be something that I'm going to look into. Good. And that is the best thing about like watching other people work. I like to watch people work because then I'll say, oh, maybe I'll start doing this or I might start doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. Nice. So do you like to watch other graphic designers work or do you watch people who are totally different from what you do? I like to do both. Mm -hmm. I like to do both because I'm a big believer in like you'll be able to like pick up some tips or maybe, you know, new things for your style, you know? So, um, yeah. I like to do both. Like I watch people that use that draw by hand these copic markers, you know, just to learn new and different things. I'm a strong believer in, you know, if, if you're only learning from yourself, it's not really gonna change much or people like yourself is what I meant to say, you know? Right. So, all right, we are definitely moving. Yeah, we're getting there. All right, so I think I do a few more things and I think we might be able to start coloring this bad boy in. Cool. We've got about an hour and 15 minutes left chat. So if you have further questions, get them in the chat. We've got actually a couple questions lined up. Um, I think it was Kendall was wondering if you've used Illustrator on the iPad yet. I haven't. First <gasps> off, I am happy that they, I, I don't have an iPad. So that's, okay. that, that's why I haven't. But I've been waiting for this day for so long. So I'm very happy that they finally were able to do that. Have you, have you tried it? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's perfect for people, like I said in the beginning, who are overwhelmed or scared by Illustrator. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just way more intuitive. Like you're just drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great beginner's tool. Cool, that's good. And and it's still like you'll be able to get vectors and stuff like that. Like it's gonna oh, come yeah. out a vector. Mm -hmm. Really? Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's not to say when I say it's great for beginners that you can't make complicated art because you hundred mm -hmm. percent can. Um, just from the get go, it's not as overwhelming as Illustrator on the desktop. That is very important. All right, you know what? Ooh, what are we editing here? Well. We're going to work on another brush, something simple, just so I'm able to move a little quicker. So this one right here is already pre-done, but more or less, if you want to make one, you just hit this little plus button right here. Go to the brush. Um, so like I said, it all depends on what you have. So for this one, I'll definitely make sure it's pressure. So I kind of have a better control. Turn it up to seven, because I think that will be perfect for what I'm trying to do. But like I said, with everything else, you kind of have to play around with it. And then, so let's see here. So for this part of the shoe right here. Ooh. Nice, I love how you can just go in and alter those points. Yes, definitely having the mouse. I feel like the mouse and, and the Cintiq are definitely the best ways uh, to go through this. Um, like I said, you, I'm always playing with it. So, And then if you just don't do it right, you just hit Control Z and just try it again. There you go. Erica says, I never use brushes in Illustrator, so I'm really excited to see this workflow. Excited. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. It's a very, um, I don't know. I feel like it's very catered to your specific style of making this. Work yeah, I, I would definitely say, yeah, this is definitely for what I do. But it's good to see that there's not just one way to do things. Definitely. So 
So I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I will try. Ooh. Ooh, that was a confident line. Think so? I do. <laughs> Well, that actually worked out. Cool. Wow. Applause. Applause in the chat for an artist it. who can do their line the right way the first time. Yeah, I appreciate it. I see something. Nope, cannot. Uh, so, yeah, so right now I'm just doing the last bit of details before I know I could start add, adding the color. All right. We do the nose. <laughs> We've got a lot of applause in the chat for your your awesome line. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's funny because nine out of ten times I'm doing it like twenty times, like one more time, one oh more time. Oh my gosh! And every time you just get more angry at yourself, yeah. <laughs> at the app, at everything. <laughs> I just learned it's just it's, it's all practice. That's what I've learned. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to know when you're deciding to do this kind of outline method mm -hmm. versus the, the brush method. Um, I think it all depends. I think it all depends on like the design actually. Because other designs, I'll definitely be more heavy with using the brushes. Mm -hmm. So I just think it, uh, yeah, it all depends what I'm doing. You're going to see a lot when I get to the color part, you're going to see a lot more brush. Mm, okay. Like I like to make sure the the line work is as perfect as possible. And then I'll play around more when it comes to um, the coloring. Gotcha. Yeah, it seems like you're choosing to do the the shape style that you're doing right now in the mm -hmm. shapes that are a little more complicated or less like the line below the nostril. That's just kind of a swoop. So that's just yeah. perfect to do with the brush. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten to the point when I draw, I'm drawing like, how do I say this? I purposely draw in a way so it makes my life easier when I bring it into Illustrator. If yeah. That makes any sense. Yeah, it's like you're thinking about what it's going to be like in Illustrator while you're mm -hmm. drawing in pencil to take it into Illustrator. And you know what? It's funny you say that because um, I think the hardest thing about Illustrator is it's, it's almost like going from driving automatic to manual. You're so used <laughs> to drawing a certain way and then you have to go back and kind of reinvent the way that you draw it's it's it's, it's like the end result's the same but you just have to think about it differently you know a hundred percent i remember one of the hardest things about learning illustrator for myself was thinking about things in layers like the thing that's furthest behind mm. versus the middle layer versus on top mm. um and it's a little harder to just move things around like in like in photoshop so once i got that and i felt more of like a an architect building my graphics mm -hmm. i was like oh okay now i yep. get it same thing because when i tell you that it's different if you had paper in front of you, you kind of had to just like put it on top of each other you know but mm -hmm. seeing it digitally it's like you don't really it's hard to wrap your head around it. I, I agree with you. It took me yes. forever. And you mentioned that you are self-taught in this mm -hmm. sphere. So what? how did you learn Illustrator? Was it online? Uh, yeah, definitely online. There's a, uh, what's it called? It's for, So I was playing with the idea of going back to school for art. And very quickly I learned it's a lot of money, like a lot of money. <sighs> And uh, a really nice teacher pulled me to the side because I told her what I was doing. And I wish I remembered her name because I would send her like a gift basket. And she said, <laughs> you know what? Why don't you try this thing called lynda.com? Just try it out, go there. There's plenty of classes. You pay a monthly fee and do that first and then come back to me. I was like, all right. And then I learned everything I needed to know through Linda. Yeah. And that's what got me started. <laughs> As someone who did go to art school, I'm nodding my head at what you're saying. Like, oh, really? <laughs> that's a that's a good way to go about it. Yep. So, shout out to her. We gotta discover her name, but for now, she will just be Miss Linda. Definitely. <laughs> I like that. 
but yeah, no, I definitely appreciate her, you know, pointing that out. And that was before, um, there's so many places you can go to learn online. I can't even, Skillshare, this is before Skillshare came out and Linda was like the only place. And of course it was YouTube videos you could learn. Mm -hmm. But the thing I liked about Linda was it had everything you needed in like one section. So you have to, you know, run around to find everything. Mm -hmm. So it was just like one spot, you got everything you needed and that was it. Yeah, and you kind of know, like, by the end of this, I'm going to learn what I need versus YouTube. It's like, I don't even know if what they say in the title is what they're actually going to do. Right, teach me. right. The first two minutes is please hit that plus button or please <laughs> yeah. subscribe, you know? Totally. Um, speaking of learning Illustrator, at 1130 Pacific time, we're going to have our daily creative challenge for Illustrator. So that's also a great way for beginners to learn. Um, it's a two-week challenge and you learn something new every day. It's great for beginners. So make sure chat that you check that out. Absolutely. And right now I'm just kind of using the brushes to do the rest of the line work. Cool, getting those little details in there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> A lot of people are saying like my entire college experience was just lynda.com. That is so crazy. That's almost, <laughs> that should be a crime. <laughs> yeah, I think it is a crime. <laughs> All right, so let's make another brush real quick. So I like this one. Um, you know what? I'll take that back. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't like it. <laughs> All right, so. I was gonna do one thing, but I called, I called an audible, which is okay. a cool term for, I'm doing another play. So change the color on this. Go with green. Green seems to be winning right now. So like this. And make the stroke a little thicker. So pretty much right here where you see the um, the horn, I'm going to add those details, those black triangle details, but I'm going to do it so I'm not like constantly doing it with the pencil tool and I'll be here all day. Mm -hmm. So again, change the hue. I'm going to leave it right the way it is right now. I can change the color and hopefully it should follow. Yep. Perfect. Yes. Score goal. Hey, it's a good day. I might I might play the lottery. Everything's working out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I had a, I had a feeling this is the little section you're going to be building that brush for. It's perfect when you can just build something that's so customized for exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, depending on the artwork, you know, I, I would use it more so for like this right here. Mm -hmm. you know what? This might work actually. Let me see. Perfect. I mean, Love it looked it. good. It's had to. I felt right. And then for this, like, this is like a little too thick. I could just drop it one. And it's perfect. There you go. Do this again for this side. Nice. Uh, Linda in the chat says that lynda.com is offered three, free through the library. And you should check your local library and see if it has it. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Fairy's wondering, how do you customize those brushes? It's pretty easy. You just go up to the brush preview when mm -hmm. you have your brush selected and you should be able to edit it by mm -hmm. double clicking on it. Yep, we gotta do is just double click it and then it gives you all these options. And then you can either do pressure or fixed or random. And this little slider right here lets you, uh, you could change the thickness. So I use it all the time. I think it's a big help. It definitely helps me to move a little faster. Definitely um, for me, when you start doing projects with other companies, just being able to move as fast as possible. Because for some reason, they always contact you when <laughs> <laughs> they need the artwork like in a week or in a few days, so. Oh my gosh. That's a big no-no. Yeah. But I've come to learn the more I do it, the more it happens, so. <laughs> I just, yeah. I'm convinced that's just, it's just, it is what it is. 
Yeah, I hope we get to a place where companies are a little more cognizant of how much effort artwork takes, but it's good that you're staying flexible in the meantime. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> All right, let's do this little side detail right here. I could use a brush, but with the, I guess the, the ridges on there, it would be hard for it to be as consistent as I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. But you could always use the width tool also. That's another cheat. Oh. So if you hit, let's see, if you hit Shift and W, you could be able to work on the width on certain ends. So I do that from time to time too, depending on what I'm doing. Okay, so you can kind of cheat, mm -hmm. like using a brush when you didn't really use one. Mm -hmm. That's great. I never really see the width tool being used. I'm glad to see it getting some love. So, like I said, I like it. I think it uh, definitely makes a difference. It definitely helps if you know what you're doing. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad at all. Right, like how to mimic the look that you're going for. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, for some people, like I said, because not everybody has the tablet to work on, this is a perfect way to give the look. I'm a believer in, um, that's why I like the cartoons that I like. It's just the line work, give some character to the to the design. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah, it mimics those nice brush pins that they used when they were hand painting those cells. A absolutely. And that's probably like uh, my favorite part, the seeing like all the line work and how they did it and how they were able to bring it to life and whatnot. Yeah. A, a Warner Bros kind of fan, Looney Tunes, whatever it might be, let us know in the chat. I'm gonna drop the stroke a little bit. There you go. So the good news about this, like once I'm completely done editing the colors for this is a breeze. Like I'm not sure how people do it for um, in Photoshop. That drag and drop, changing the colors on the fly are inspired by Pixar. Yes, definitely. That's another good one. I think that my favorite thing about Pixar in general is specifically like the case to look at. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I've learned over time is, you know, Having a style that people know you for goes a long way. Yep. You can see my style from across the room. I, <laughs> I just think it's, uh, you know, the way that, you know, I do my designs with the line work, you know? Um, when I was teaching myself uh, how to do that, mm -hmm. and, you know, at first, obviously we're learning something new, I'm um, a little subconscious, but I start to realize that, you know what, like, this is my advantage because I do things so differently, it's helping me to stand out. So yeah, I definitely think I, I have a style at this point that uh, that people see whenever I put out my artwork. Yeah, I think one thing I noticed about your work too was the color, which we haven't jumped into yet, but seeing all of your work kind of tiled together, I was like, okay, I get it. I get what Anderson is about. Yeah, you have on so you look at <laughs> without even knowing. But uh, yeah, it definitely translates into my work. Like I'm a big fan of color. I have no problem wearing pinks and you know, softer colors and purples and stuff like that. So um, definitely put in my artwork, which is nice because people now have like different colors of paint up on their wall they probably wouldn't have had. So I think yeah. that's pretty cool. Hey, that's a great point. Beatrix says, hello from Mexico. What's up, Beatrix? Hey. Good to see you. On? Thanks for coming in. And I don't, I don't know if we saw this earlier in the chat. I think someone asked where everyone was watching from, but chat, go ahead and let us know where you hail from, what's going on, where you're living, how the weather is. Definitely. It's very, very cold in the Midwest, as usual, also in New York, where Anderson is. <laughs> Gotta love New York. Brutal and beautiful. Absolutely. That was a good Ooh. one. Yeah, it was. I love how after it, you're like, yep, that was good. Don't have to do that again. Sometimes, you know, you just, like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know? I was curious mm -hmm. to see how you're going to add that little thing in. I can think of three ways I could do this. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what would be the, <laughs> the easiest way of doing it.
Let's see if I can do this. Nope. Ah, oh, darn. Uh, Paloma says it's gloomy and cloudy in DC. It's cold and rainy in Oregon where Cody is. Uh, snowing in Ireland. Man, we've got a lot of cold and rain going on. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, makes sense, I guess, for the time of year. Cool. Oh, yes. Took a minute, but we got it, we got it. That looks pretty solid, actually. So. <gasps> Is it time? I think it might be time. All right. Oh, I gotta do one more thing, but we're pretty much right there. So what I'm gonna do now is, so I'm gonna do my own stroke line around it to the black line. I'm just gonna do it right behind uh, the bull, and then I should be good to go. The reason why I like to do it behind because if I need to move anything around, I can just do shapes behind it, and nobody know the difference because as long as it's black, you know, and it looks uniform, it's not a problem. So that's just how I like to do things. So cool, let's see how this goes. Right behind, I'll make another layer. Let's call it the stroke. And then I'm just gonna go around. Cool. Um, how much more time do we have left? Let's see, we've got about 45-ish minutes before we're gonna start wrapping things up. Actually, cool. even more than that, 55 minutes. Cool, we're making really good time, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we might even have some time to experiment with colors. Absolutely. And that's the cool thing about sneakers. They come in so many colors. Yes. That's pretty smart um, about the idea that you're like into designing these sneakers. Cause if a company needs a bunch of different colorways, you're like, okay, I could do that. But every different color is a different Abs price. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Happy accidents. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, Jessica is wondering, has anyone taken an online graphic design boot camp? And if so, what are your thoughts? Jessica, I'm curious to know some of those boot camp names. I don't think I, I know any off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of a specifically a boot camp, but definitely those kind of online courses where you learn beginning to end. I'll tell you one thing, I would think now would be, you know, the perfect time to launch one of those, especially if people are at home and people are more comfortable with Zoom. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful time for online educational content. Absolutely. I know. Oh, oh go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I know when people needed to start working from home and all kinds of things like that, our team at work that focuses on making tutorials, we had to go into overdrive because everyone was at home trying to learn Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is a, it's a good problem to have. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. So as you can see, I'm pretty much just following along what I already did. And then if I ever mess up, I can just go back and use my mouse. So use the mouse and pencil in tandem. Nice. And then so I'm, I'm going to definitely zoom back when I'm zoom out when I'm done with this and kind of just to make sure everything looks smooth the way that I like it. Yeah, I was going to just note that it seems like you're doing this pretty quickly since you have that nice outline already to work from. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could always, um, you know, copy the entire image, make it one shape and then just hit the stroke. But like I said, I always found that um, having different line work with the strokes just helps for the image to really pop off. Yeah, it feels a little page. more in intentional as mm -hmm. well. Sometimes if you do that, just like outlining the stroke or offsetting it, you can get some weird things going on. Yep, there's that too. You get like one uniform shape and it doesn't really like, you know, there's no character to it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of trying to add as much character as possible, even if it's a sneaker. <laughs> you gotta. 
Joshua says, sorry, I'm late. What are we doing today, Joshua? We're working on a sweet uh, sneaker design with Anderson Blue. He's shown us the entire process of his work, starting from sketch to colors to final. It's going to be awesome. We're going to go over even more tomorrow. Same time, mm -hmm. same place. We'll be back 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So come back for tomorrow as well, definitely. But we've still got about 50 minutes left. Cool. So, in fact, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to the sneaker and put like a little thread mark here. Ooh. So you could just use a regular pencil tool or the pen tool doesn't really matter. And then, I'm sure most people know about this, but I'll just show them anyway. If you go to like the appearance, you go to stroke, you hit this little stroke option thing here. You turn it, you turn it to a dash line, hit that. And then if you make it less, brings it together. So now I have like a nice little thread line. I can make it a little thicker so people can see it. Nice. I love how easy this makes making a dashed line. Goodness. Yeah, I was I was very happy when I found out about this. Cool. Nice. I feel like that style definitely matches the rest. Like it's kind of shorter, thicker, has mm -hmm. some character. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, I think uh, we're good for coloring. All right. So what I'm going to do is what I like to do is uh, put it all in one color and then figure out where I do my shading. So I already have a color lay up here to show you the colors I'm going to be using. So right up here are the colors I'm going to be using for the bowl. Oh. Um, I'm going to try to keep it pretty close to the sneaker just so people could uh, recognize what it is. Um, the reason why I do that is because in sneaker world, there are so many different kind of sneakers in the same um, silhouette, but just different colors. Mm -hmm. So I try to stick to it so people can say, oh, yeah, that's that one sneaker that Jordan did or whatever. Right, so, and people are proud of the colorway that they have, so it has to yes. be like. And I'm gonna go with this red right here. With this, I'm definitely gonna want to color in the nostrils. And you know, I definitely play with it. At first, I'll just you know go with just a close enough color, and then I'll like zoom out and then take a look at it and see if this works, if it makes sense. So right here, now it all depends on if I laid it correctly, and I did. So as you can see, the black is popping out. Nice. And when I remove the sketch, you'll be able to see a little better. So with this, the top will be red also. Bottom right here, I'm going to do a little lighter Ooh. than that. There you go. I think that should be the right. I'm going to make the bottom darker. Um, this one right here is definitely going to be darker. What I'm going to do is also is I'm actually going to cut this shape right here below the black line, just make it a little darker. So what I like to do is right here is double click to isolate the shape, go over it. This is just a copy that I'm going over. And this is where I use the pathfinder. I can just cut it ungroup it and now I just have that one spot and then there you go and then I'll do that for over here also because fun fact this sneaker is actually inspired by a World War II uh, fighter jet that's why they have like this little mouth thing over here oh. um, the reason why they chose a World War II jet is because this Air Jordan he's known for flying through the sky he's this big battle guy when it comes to playing on the court so this is what this entire sneaker is inspired by so I'm going to go and just like I did before, take this black stroke, make a copy of it. And then I'm just gonna isolate the shape right here, put it over. And then when I divide it, then I can just focus just on that shape. So if I wanna do like a, supposed to be white, but obviously it's in the back. So we have like a nice little gray. There you go. What's gonna happen is as I, go through it, you see how everything's starting to poke out. But I just have to turn all the shapes to the right color or it's gonna look like a ghost. So 
All right, so now all this stuff right here, I'm gonna have is red, the same red. Cool. This is gonna be gray, because this is how it is on the sneaker. So, uh, let me just try a lighter gray. Back here is gonna be a little darker. Use the same. I'll use this for right now. Back of the sneaker is gonna be red also. And then for the horns, I think I'm gonna go with a gray. I think that would that should work out nicely as far as colors. Cool. That's so awesome to see all of your hard work that you did for the first I know. majority of the stream, like coming to fruition. I know the beginning looks a little tough, but if you stick with me, I promise you it, it works out in the end. Yeah, I gotta trust that process. And then for the laces, um, I like to wear funky colors on my laces, so we're gonna go to orange, why not? Ooh. And I'll leave that empty. So I think we have enough. So like I said, when I flip it, now we have like a nice flat image of the bull for right yes. now. Yes. And I'm gonna hit the save button because I did not do that this entire time and I hate for this to go away. Oh, so, good call. So, uh, all right, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start um, working on the shading and how I do things as far as shading. Um, where do I start, where do I start, where do I start? So I'm actually gonna start with the laces, why not? In fact, before I start the laces, I'm gonna continue dividing the shape. Like I said, even if I do anything wrong, that's why I like to have, make a copy of this stroke right here. It doesn't interrupt anything. I could always just combine these again and just redo it if, it, if anything's wrong. Nice. So I actually have my colors picked out. And just a heads up for people, if you're like not sure what colors you wanna use and I have an easier time because, you know, I'm basing this off of the sneaker, but God forbid you wanna do something different. I always like to go to the color and the color guide, you know, pick the color I'm using and just go through the list and try to figure out like what colors would, you know, make my life easier and what colors I could use. Um, you know, if I wanna use a red or other colors that will play along nicely, you know? Oh, that's a really good workflow. I've never seen someone use the swatches as like a reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to just in case, because sometimes it's, it's, it's there, it's available. So I try to take advantage of it. Yeah, I'm curious to know if you ever use the recolor artwork tool. Uh, I would say no, what's the recolor artwork tool? So it's really cool if you highlight your entire artwork and then I mm -hmm. think it's an edit and then edit colors, mm -hmm. you basically get a color wheel where you can drag one of your colors around and it mm -hmm. will change all of your colors to match. Oh, I have heard of that. And now that I know exactly what it does, I think I'm gonna start using that. Heck yes. I use it all the time just to even decide what colors I'm gonna use in the first place. Really? Yeah. Huh. Definitely gonna start doing that. Yeah, I'll so, kind of take my first stab at a color palette and then finesse it with that tool. See, I'm happy to see. I'm learning something I'm on here. So that's Good. awesome. So now, just any, anyway, I forgot to say something. So anytime I personally do my, my lighting and shading, I always have it, I'm not sure if it's backwards, but I usually have like on the left side of the face is the lightest and on the right side is the darkest. So I always just try to keep that that same theme with all of my artwork. So it looks cohesive. So that's what mm -hmm. we're gonna do here. That's a really good little tip. Just one thing you can do to help your style become a little little stronger, a little more obvious. Mm -hmm. So right here, and the good news, I just take the eyedropper and I'm gonna want a little bit of lighting right here. This is really cool to see you build these little highlight shapes just mm -hmm. organically. So usually, and this is why I like doing it, um, this is gonna be a highlight, but that's another reason why I like doing it um, by hand. It's just because I could map everything out to the T. You didn't see it on the sketch, but I'll go back over and I'll sketch saying, like, all right, I want the lighting to go here, 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 and here. So whenever I'm literally 
doing my design, everything's already figured out. I'm not really trying to uh, recreate the wheel. Smart. Uh, Stefan wants to know, what do you think of the MF Doom sneakers? First ever rapper signature Nike sneaker and it has graffiti elements as well. I am a huge fan. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't have a pair because it came out so long ago. It's funny he says that because I actually have a design in the background I'm working on of that same sneaker. Oh. Yeah. So, but yeah, I am a huge fan, huge fan of MF Doom and his whole, uh, just him being a hip hop artist. For people that might not know, he passed away not too long ago, mysteriously. MF Doom is uh, pretty much this, this artist who uh, covered his identity with this mask and something pretty much like if you know Fantastic Four, uh, Dr. Doom, and he played like this hip hop villains, like storylines with his album and stuff like that. He tied in like comics and stuff like that. It's really cool. Really, really cool. So if you never heard of him, you should definitely check him out. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw that post on your Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. well, who knows? Maybe that might be the thing I do tomorrow. Maybe I'll do the MF Doom design tomorrow. Bring that oh, to Oh, chat. Would you like that? Let us yeah. know, give us some feedback. Yeah, let or me know. If, if you want to see something totally different that Anderson doesn't even have planned, give us an idea. It could happen, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. This is live. So right here, you know. So yeah, so right now I'm just gonna go over everything and add all the shadowing and just lay the majority of it down. And, and then I'll just zoom out, take a look at it. If I think I'm missing anything, I'll just keep working on it. Stefan says that he would love to see your Doom project. All right, that's one vote. Nice. Uh, Jessica's wondering, Anderson, did you attend Adobe Max 2020? actually never been to an adobe max oh we gotta yeah, change no. that I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that <laughs> no don't be embarrassed <laughs> no 2020 was the first year that it was open worldwide and free so maybe really? next year something similar will happen and there'll be no excuses then definitely when <laughs> when when uh is it the same month it's usually in october or okay. like the first week of november okay that it's all doable. Definitely. Uh, Jessica, did you attend? Did you watch the virtual sessions? And if so, which one did you like the most? Or if anyone else attended, let us know what you what you watched, what you liked, what you learned. So Kathleen, give me the rundown. Like, why would I want to go to an Adobe Max? Well, first of all, Adobe Live's usually there. So <laughs> that's a good <laughs> reason. Um, I think it's kind of coined as the world's largest creativity conference or the creativity conference. So mm -hmm. if you do anything creative, whether you're a designer in fashion and graphics, if you're an illustrator, a fine artist, it's mm -hmm. a great place to meet people, but also to learn from the best of the best. Mm -hmm. How many days is it? It's over a span of a week. So I think the conference oh, really? days are actually it's three days, but there's mm -hmm. like pre-conference and post-conference. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And like, you could be at any level. I could be starting out or I could be, you know, a veteran in the game and, you know, something for everybody. Totally. We have a bunch of students that come. We have a bunch of people that have worked in corporate for 35 years. So it's the mix. Oh. Uh, Sandrine says Adobe Max made me a lot more curious about working in 3D. Interesting. That is something that I'm also curious in also. I'm curious, but I don't know if I'll ever touch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, because uh, I've gone to different conferences, and then one of the things that's piqued my interest is toys. Oh, yes. So learning how that process goes and how you know you bring a toy to life and stuff like that is very, very interesting. Nice. So are you talking like figurines, kind of those more artisan toys? Yeah, I would say like more the vinyl toys. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I saw one of your TikToks about like top five. Yes. <laughs> Big fan of cause. Yes, there you go. 
And I also noticed on your TikTok that you post a lot of like traditional art specifically and less of your digital process. Mm -hmm. um, is that intentional or you just find that that performs really well? Um, yeah, I would say it's a mixture. Um, yeah, I would say it's a mixture. I think traditional, uh, since it's a younger audience, able to wrap their head around it a little better. Great point. And uh, because you're going to laugh at this, some people think because it's done digitally, it's like super duper easy. Like I just upload it and press a button and then poof, everything is where it needs to be. Oh no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, so yes, just to show them, you know, the regular process of drawing and stuff like that. I think for the person coming at a younger age, it's a little easier to wrap their head around. And then some people don't have the money to have Adobe Illustrator and stuff like that, you know? Or they don't have an yes. iPad, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just believe it's an easier gateway to, to get into art, just keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And also just a really great way to learn the, the stepping stones and the fundamentals mm -hmm. of art before getting distracted by the tools mm -hmm. panel in Photoshop. Exactly, exactly. So, but I do, I do show a little bit of the digital stuff. Um, it's more like bringing bring them through the process from like the sketch, like the finished piece. So, you know, still trying to figure it out but try my best to, you know, show people the different avenues and whatnot. That's cool. I like it. Whatever you post, it's cool. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Ellie wants to know, do you have advice for artists that want to transition to vector artwork? Like how to take that first step? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely take your time. And I would say, just start off with the start off with start off with the mouse. Cause I know a lot of people. I get a lot of questions. Um, people ask me a lot of questions, saying like, "Hey, I want to start off. I want to get the entire setup. I want the the Mac. I want the 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 tablet. I want everything." And sometimes, if you get everything, it's just so much harder to get into it because it's so overwhelming. You know, like I've used the mouse for like the first eight years, and I got the tablet, and it was still overwhelming. You know, so I would definitely just say. Just practice, start off small, learn, you know, start off learning the tools and just take your time, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you could do, if you could do Photoshop, you can 110% do Illustrator. You just gotta wrap your head on how it works. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different way of thinking, but mm -hmm. I think actually once you get the hang of the fundamentals of Illustrator, it's an easier product as a whole because everything works the same way. In Photoshop, it's kind of like, you can do anything in any different way. Yeah, yep, I definitely agree. So right now I'm doing some of the shading for the laces. I'm gonna do that classic Pathfinder workflow to get those shapes divided. Yes. Just trying to make sure everything looks as smooth. And by the way, you could always use this to smooth things out. I don't know if people can see that, but that little uh, icon that smooth out lines or squares or anything like that. Yeah, the classic smart corner widget. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so funny that I'm so used to just doing things that I know how to do them, but sometimes I just forget the names. Yeah, you're like, I you know am. the thing? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that thing, that thing, that does the thing? Yeah, that's uh -huh. it. The thingy thing, totally. I'm excited to see what color you choose to do these highlights in for the laces. Okay, nice, that deeper orange. Mm-hmm. And I think for the highlights, and honestly, what am I doing? Go to my brushes. Oh, there you go. So this is when I start going brush crazy a little bit. I'm here for it. We've got about 15 minutes for you to go brush crazy. Hey, that's perfect. <laughs> I 
And then while you're working on that, I'll let the chat know that tomorrow it's going to be pretty much same old thing where we're going to be working through the rest of Anderson's process and maybe even working on something different. But for the last 30 minutes of the stream, we're going to actually be doing an artist spotlight. So we're going to be checking out one of your portfolios, uh, going through some of the projects, doing some feedback, just hyping you up a little bit. So that's going to be awesome. I'm excited to hear uh, what Anderson thinks of our chosen artist. Definitely. Ooh, I love that. So I'm actually, it's always a struggle trying to find the right colors. Mm -hmm. I love how warm this design is, like overall. Yeah, I thought, since I was going with the red, I thought uh, keeping it. All right, now I'm gonna add another highlight right about here, oops. Perfect. And then what I will do is add some more shading. Cool. In fact, I take that back. I know exactly what I'm about to do. So I'll use this one. I'll do this. I feel like this texturing or this lighting technique mm -hmm. really helps the viewer see that this is like a shoelace <laughs> fabric, mm -hmm. even though it's still very much in your in your style of that like kind of shiny cell shading. Mm -hmm. And you know, it helps it uh, look less flat, you know, mm -hmm. the shading definitely And add some more shading right here. Uh, Rachel is wondering, how do we choose the artist for the artist spotlight? That's a great question, Rachel. So we have a form where you can recommend yourself or other artists to be spotlit. Um, and then we will randomly pick one that we think kind of matches the style of the artist that's on Adobe Live. So I'm guessing tomorrow's artist will be heavy on the character design on the illustration style. Um, thank you, Cody. You also provided the info, appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, definitely you should submit your portfolio or someone else's portfolio because we're always looking for artists to spotlight and celebrate. Cool. Great so that's question. pretty much what I'm going to do throughout the shape. Nice. So once you get it figured out on one shape, you can kind of repeat it as needed. Absolutely. So I should do the lighting first. And that's one thing about the pencil tool. Like now is when I really, um, you know, just draw it inside of Illustrator. Yeah, it's the fun once part. I, yeah, once I've figured everything out. Nice. How did you fill that in so quickly? What was the hotkey that you used? So what I did was I just used Shift X and I just turned it from stroke to full shape. Anderson, I'm curious about your 2021 creative goals. Yes. What do you, what do you have planned? Um, a few things. So whenever I do my sneaker art series, I promise one design a month. Mm. So I definitely have to stick to that. Um, I actually have a very, very, very cool project coming up. Um, God, I wish I could talk more about it, but I do have a really cool project coming up um, and hopefully I get to talk more about it next month or the following month. But um, for me, it really does unfortunately depend on what's going on with this pandemic. Mm. Um, the one number one thing I definitely want to do is an art show. I think I'm overdue. I would love to do one in New York City. Just one cater to, you know, showing my different sneaker artwork and just doing, you know, 12 to 20 pieces that people can come down and see. But uh, that's pretty much the goals that I have for this year. Just continuing to, you know, educate on TikTok, create new sneaker artwork, and hopefully squeeze an art show. I love it. Simple, but you know exactly what you want to do. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Sari's wondering, do you create every day? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I always try to draw an hour a day, just, Ooh. you know, because I'm self-taught, um, I'm always just trying to get better. Um, one of the things that I did with TikTok when I was stuck at home like everybody else during the pandemic was I would draw once a day and I would just show it on TikTok. I, I would like record the process. So that's kept me really honest with it. So, um, so yeah, just once a day, it could be, um, anything, you know, it had to be sneaker related, but just anything, just keeping me warmed up and just working on the craft. There you go. Do you still do that? Or are you more busy with other things? Um, I try to fit it in. I've been fitting it in. So, so yeah, Good. yeah, it's hard, but I make it happen. Man, I could take a note from your book for <laughs> sure. Um, and honestly, it's, I get that from basketball. One of the things that you're taught in basketball in order to be, you know, to go to the next level, you have to like really play ball a certain amount of time a day. And the goal always was you have to shoot like a thousand jump shots a day. I don't know who has time to do that, wow. but all the NBA players say they fit that in. So I just take that same mentality into artwork that, you know, I need to work on this, this much time a day. Um, some of the, my favorite creators, not even artists, but like a person like Denzel Washington is still taking acting classes to this day, you know? And for me, it's like, I, I can't even fathom that he still needs to do that because he's so great. So um, when I hear people that are at this top pinnacle of their career and they're doing that, it just lets me know I should probably do should be doing the same. Wow, that is really inspiring. I feel convicted right now. Like, oh, okay, I need to go draw a little bit. Hey, try it. And like I said, it doesn't need to be anything to like kill anybody. Um, mm -hmm. What I like to do is I like to like break it down. Like, you know, I need to get better at drawing women. I'll just do that for a week. Mm -hmm. just that or if you get better drawing hands i'll just do that so i'll just break it down piece by piece it's a little easier to do rather than feeling like you have to do like this masterpiece yeah definitely in the past something that's helped me if i'm drawing traditionally is like i need to do two sketchbook pages today whatever it is that's fine yep, yep. and you know it's a muscle like anything else like the more you do it the better you get yeah i think that's so true with art especially I didn't know that when I first started. I just thought, you know, if you were blessed as a great yeah. artist, that was it. But the more people I talk to, the more it's, you know, I've learned it's just lots and lots and lots of practice. Mm -hmm. You can be blessed as a great artist and be surpassed quite yes. easily by someone who just practices. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's one of the saddest things or mis most discouraging things that I hear from people is like, well, I'm just not good at it. So like, I'll never do it especially with art and it's just so not true yeah no i agree i think just like you said it's gotta just gotta practice and the good thing that i'm happy that i see is just that because of the internet and you see more people doing it you kind of for me i've learned that not everybody knows everything but mm -hmm. they're just doing their best and i feel like if you have that mentality it's a little easier to step into that's a great point uh, Hector is wondering how many hours do you usually take on each vector illustration? Um, it depends how crazy it is. <laughs> um, something like this, if I had nothing going on, I could focus on it. I could do this in a day if I'm like, if everything works out perfectly. Um, but it takes about, you know, between 10 and 20 hours, depending how crazy it is. Yeah, like the final product is so polished and has those nice graphic shapes, but you have to sketch those out first and land yep. on them. Exactly. And then the one thing I, you know, I tell people that the hardest thing for me is a lot of the stuff I do doesn't exist. So I have to like figure out like, how can I change this into a bull, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I have one sneaker design I changed into uh, like a jet plane and that took forever for me to like figure out that balance. And that's probably the hardest part for me is trying to figure out how to like, you know, create the character. But mm -hmm. once, once I have that, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. Do you make a bunch of different sketches or do you kind of work on one and mold it until it's what you want? Um, I would say it depends on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it can be a bunch of different sketches and me trying to figure out what works the best. Um, it's rare that 
I'll do it once and be like, all right, this is it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think now it happens a lot faster because I've been doing it for so long. But in the beginning, it definitely was, it took me a little bit to do. That's a great example of the practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. And the best part, if you're the only person that does, I don't know, some of the best horse horse designs people have ever seen, <laughs> you know what I mean? You only get better, you only get better at it. It's a great example, those horse designers. On a side note, if, if you love horses, you should definitely do it. Because I don't know any person that owns a horse that doesn't have money in their pocket. So just throwing that out there. Or a person who loves a horse that's like not obsessed with horses. That is true too. <laughs> they are very dedicated. Yes, horse people. Um, Empire Art was wondering if you have any advice on a new artist trying to build their own website. You have a pretty robust website, Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I would say um, picking a website that makes it almost brainless. I use um, Shopify mm -hmm. and ever since I started using them, they are hands down my favorite. The one thing that really, this is not like a paid ad or anything, but <laughs> one of the things that really uh, made me a fan of them is that like they have so many apps that support you and then you can get like a little terminal like reader so you do credit cards and stuff like that and then when i got that i was actually able to take transactions from like outside of the country which is so difficult um if you try to use paypal or squares or anything like that so mm -hmm. um shopify supports that kind of stuff which is really which is i'm telling you a big deal even if you go to canada um not being able to take credit card like today is is definitely difficult that's a great great idea and i'll just put this out there when i had my instagram deactivated and i went to a bunch of mentors asking like what would you do like would you just start fresh and they're like why don't you have a website that you own completely like social media can kick you off at any time absolutely if you have you your should. own hub you definitely <laughs> won't have this problem again yep you should definitely have your own real estate i yes. definitely agree to that People are lo loving the horse jokes in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> You're right. Hey, people love horse. I've never seen a person that kind of loves their horse. It's it's definitely a passion of theirs. Uh huh. Nice. I love the kind of contouring we're getting with these shadows and highlights, even though it's mm -hmm. such a flat design. So like another thing I'm gonna do to kind of add some more shading to it. In fact, I'm gonna do that, perfect. And we got about 10 minutes left. So in about, I don't know, four or five minutes, maybe we can mm -hmm. start going over everything that we've covered today and then what we're gonna be working on tomorrow. Perfect. Cool, I'll give you a heads up. Yep, perfect. Amy says that the three friends that she's always wanted, someone who has a pool, someone who has a four-wheeler, and someone who has a horse. <laughs> the best go. three friends you can have. <laughs> <laughs> pool friend is pretty clutch. Hands down. I, I remember as a kid, I was like, oh, I definitely want a pool. Yeah. Not, not so much as an adult. No, not, not so much work. as an adult. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our uh, next door neighbors growing up had a pool, which in Ohio, I was like, why do you guys have a pool? But also, mm -hmm. I'm so glad you have a pool. Yep. Absolutely. It's like owning a pool without with half the stress, without any of the stress, actually. Yes. 100%. And we could just go over there and my parents would know where we were, but they wouldn't have to watch us. Oh, your parents probably, probably loved it even more. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Right. I feel like this pink highlight is almost giving it like a dragon vibe, which really? I really like. Huh, I'm about that. Heck yeah, I saw that you recently had a, a dragon print, right? Or was I that did. older news? Okay. So um, I'm a big fan of Kobe, mm -hmm. uh, another basketball player. And he had a few sneakers inspired by Bruce Lee. So I thought it would have been a really cool idea to um, do that sneaker. So Bruce Lee is known as the, the dragon. 
So I decided to change that sneaker into a dragon. So that's why I created that design. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw your recent uh, Mamba kind of Grinch combo. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> Very another cool. one. Thank you. So yeah, so with the stuff that I do, um, I look at sneakers as art because, and in fact, definitely today I would say it's just a new form of art that um, just wearable, you know, because people spend so much on it. People really, really like, there's a crowd of people that really enjoy it. There's definitely a culture for it. So what I do is I try to tell those stories in my own way. So when I hear, because most of these sneakers have stories to them, even the Raging Bull, you know? Um, so I just try to interject that story into my designs. So for people who don't know, um, Michael Jordan played for the Bulls. So for this one, this is just a simple, you know, merging those two worlds of him playing with the Bulls, um, also being known as the Windy City. That's why you see the cloud I haven't drawn out yet. Oh. And just trying to tie all that together in a sneaker so even if it's a person that doesn't know this is a Michael Jordan sneaker, they could look at it and be like, huh, this is, oh, is that a sneaker as a bull? You know, so I, I, I like the fact that people, when they see it, it's so interesting, you kind of want to stop and ask more questions about it. That's great. I think that really harkens back to your kind of graphic design background where you're trying to really solve a problem and share information through your designs, mm -hmm. trying to tell those stories and get people to give you a double take. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, I guess, storytelling marketing, I guess. I, I just, mm -hmm. all the stuff that I enjoy usually has some type of story to it, you know? Yeah, I guess that makes sense if you like comics and cartoons so much as, as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I was reading some book on art and it was just saying how um, they did a test where they put two paintings, same exact painting right next to each other. And one was just like painting A, but painting B, they're both with sunsets, by the way. And um, <laughs> painting B was just like, this is a sunset I used to see when I was a kid, when I was growing up in Long Island. And the one that had the story to it is the one that people thought was real and wanted to buy, not the organic one that's just like painting A. So. Huh. That's interesting. That also makes me think about like your reasoning behind the art that you make and and why it might be valuable. So having that story that's only yours mm -hmm. and not trying to just make a beautiful sunset just for the sake of a beautiful sunset. Yeah, that people, you know, people want to connect to the things that we do, you know? Right. So. Uh, Jerry's bringing up The Last Dance documentary on Netflix about Michael Jordan. Have you mm -hmm. watched that? Oh, I have, absolutely. Yeah, yep. I heard it's really good. Yes, uh, it's really, really good. Um, it does make Michael Jordan a little crazy because oh. he's so competitive. But right. um, in order to get to the level that he's at, you have to have a little crazy in you, you know, to be so dominant. But uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Just learning how, uh, how to be so dominant in a field that you love, you know? Yeah, it takes a special, special person. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Ellie or Eli says your art is awesome, Anderson. I just came from your website. So shout out to you for your unique concepts. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. That's a great segue into chatting about the process that we've worked on today for this unique concept. We've got about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can start from the very beginning, from the yeah. sketch what you did, your process, and then what we're gonna do tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. So can I actually, I wanna see if I can actually, cool. So we began with just a sketch right here, showing you that the design that I drew out, inspired by this sneaker that I have right here called the Raging Bulls, um, it's a Michael Jordan sneaker. So the entire time I pretty much made the shapes for, of the sneaker, as you can see, um, just, using the pencil tool just to mark everything out. After doing that, I did the stroke, which is right there. And then now what I'm doing is I'm starting to add the color, add the highlights, it's starting to put like the final details to just to help this design to really, really, really pop. Um, the goal is this is gonna be a sticker. It's probably also gonna be a print, 
So I want to have something that really pops right off the page. So when people walk into somebody's room or office or anything like that, it really catches that person's attention. Awesome. So you said it's going to be a sticker. Are we going to see any of that process tomorrow? Or are you going to jump into a different design? Um, that is a good question. So what I have planned is if I finish this tomorrow, I have another design that uh, I'll start working on and bring you guys behind it. Also, it might be the MF Doom or it could be a totally different design. So Cool. So people are going to have to come back tomorrow to see Absolutely. how this ends up. Uh, we have to have, just have a couple minutes left so you can keep working. Um, but I will just let chat, I'll let you know that we have a full day of Adobe Live coming up right after us at 1130 Pacific time or 230 Eastern time. We're going to be doing a hosted replay of the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, so if you ever want to learn Illustrator after seeing Anderson's awesome work, make sure you stick around right after this for an intro into that. It's going to be a two week challenge where you're going to learn all of the basics. Then we're going to follow into Val's stream for illustration to video. So how we can take our illustrations to motion. That's going to be with Val at noon. And then we're going to do the hosted replay of the XD Daily Creative Challenge. So just as a reminder for those replays, they are previously recorded, but the chat is open. So you can just hang out, talk with your friends, moderators are gonna be there to answer any kind of questions that you have. And uh, it's a great place to just chill out and, and take a little break. Cool, I'm excited to see that illustration into, into video. Yeah. I feel like that is the next step for a lot of illustrators. How can I take my flat image to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. Anything to keep, you know, keep it intriguing, keep people, uh, give them something new. Yeah, and I'll also say having motion skills, like knowing how to animate or use After Effects is super rare if you also know how to draw well. Like it's usually either really? one or the other. Yes, it's really difficult to find people who are awesome crafts people that mm -hmm. also can add motion. That's awesome, so that's good to you, know. Yeah, if you wanna be valuable, learn some animation. And then we have about a minute left. So chat, if you have any last minute questions or just some love to shoot Anderson's way, feel free to do so in the chat. Like I mentioned, we're going to be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. And Anderson, is there a place that you want people to catch you on the internet, specifically Instagram, TikTok? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. If you have Instagram, follow me, Anderson Blue, that's B-L-U-U, um, one word. If you're on TikTok, feel free to come check me out. That one is, you know what, I got it mixed up. Anderson Blue, one word for TikTok. Anderson underscore Blue is for Instagram. But if you go to my website, you'd be able to see everything there. Everything's linked there. And yeah, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And yeah, I'm excited to hear from you guys. Awesome. Anderson, thanks so much for being here with us today. No I'm excited Thank to so see... Much. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be awesome. So stick around, everyone. We're going to have Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge coming up right after this, and we'll be back tomorrow with Anderson. Thanks, everybody. So.